we're going to get into some quantitative stuff here. Um, so measuring and expressing radioactive decay and performing calculations involving half-lives. Um, so here we can see an image of uh, a device that you've likely all heard of before known as a Geiger counter. Okay, Geiger counter. So this yellow looking box right here, you've probably heard these things. They make that obnoxious like clicking, beeping sound, right? I'm going to bring one of these into our live lecture so we can um, get a feel for how they work. Um, but now if you look on the inside of these things, a schematic, um, so there is a thin window right here, which is typically made up of a material that will allow um, an alpha or beta particle to pass right through. Okay, And within this little chamber are filled uh, a bunch of argon atoms, and those alpha or beta particles will ionize those argon atoms. So they're energetic enough to collide with an argon and knock out an electron. Um, and so uh, within this tube then is an electrode, right? There's an uh, anode and a cathode, okay? Um, and so as these argon ions strike the plate, it completes the circuit and produces a count. So it sends a little signal through the electrodes, which are then amplified and counted. So those little clicks that you hear, um, that's a radioactive decay event. Okay, um, And so that number is quantified in a couple of, of different units. One is called the Curie, named for um, Mary Curie herself. Um, and one Curie, one CI, is equal to 3.7 times 10 to the 10 Beckwurls. And so Beckwurls is the name of another scientist that worked in this field. And so what is a Beckwurl? Well, that is a decay event per second. So in other words, if I have something like, um, let's pick on carbon-14, we know that it undergoes beta decay and uh, releases a nitrogen nuclide as well as a beta particle. So every time one of these little events happens, every time a beta particle gets emitted, that's an event. Okay, And so if we have 3.7 times 10 to the 10 of these events per second, that is one Curie. Okay, um, So we could also relate this in stoichiometry as 3.7 times 10 to the 10 atoms per second or even nuclides per second because we recognize for every event, for every radioactive decay event, that had to originate from one atom. Okay, So let's do a sample calculation. So all nuclear decay events follow a first order rate law. Okay, So here we can see a nice review of our first order rate law. Um, and now we write this uh, slightly different. Okay. So instead of talking about this as a rate, we think of the rate as radioactivity. Okay, so the actual quantification of radioactivity um, is the rate of this reaction, and that's given by A. Okay, um, and so that equals K, the first order rate constant, times N, the number of atoms. So in our normal kinetics, right, we recognize that it was K times concentration. In radioactivity, that's K times the number of atoms. And we can use all of our other uh, first order equations to quantify radioactivity. So here's an example problem. Radium-223 undergoes decay with a half-life of 11.4 days. What is the radioactivity of a sample that contains one microgram of radium-223. Give the answer in units of Bacquerel and Curie. So the first thing we need to do is get a rate constant out of this thing. Um, and so we can use our half-life equation. I'm going to rearrange that to be K equals 0.693 over T one half. And because I want these in units of Bacquerels and Curies, I need to make uh, convert my days into seconds. 
okay? So let's do that. Let's say 11.4 days, and this is good review for the final stoichiometry. We know uh, in one day, there's 24 hours, and in one hour, there's 3,600 seconds. So if we say 11.4 times 24 times 3,600, it's going to be a big number, and that's what we should expect, right? Um, so I'm going to call that with three sig figs, 9.84 one, two, three, four, five, times 10 to the fifth seconds. And so now I can calculate a K from this thing in units of one over seconds by saying 0.693 over 9.84 times 10 to the fifth seconds. Um, and I can do that on this calculator by simply saying one over X and then now times 0.693. And so for this rate constant, I get 7.04 times 10 to the minus 7, 1 over seconds. Okay? So that's the unit we want for our radioactivity and a rate constant, 1 over seconds. And so now that's our case. So now we just need to convert this into number of atoms. All right? So 1 microgram of radon-223. So first we're going to convert that into grams. We know in one microgram there's 1 times 10 to the minus 6 grams. Now I've got to get the molar mass of radon-223. Uh, let's see, do I have that written down anywhere easily? So I'm just, even though it's like I should be using the periodic table mass, um, oh, look at this. My thing doesn't have it. Uh, so one second, folks. I'm going to find that mass. What I forgot to a reasonable approximation, when we have one of these um, exact nuclides, so such as radon-223, we can just call that 223 grams per mole. Okay? So I was failing at remembering that. Okay? So that's going to be uh, 223 grams per one mole. And so now we need to convert that into number of molecules. And so we know in one mole, there's 6.022 times 10 to the 23 atoms or molecules. Okay. So we'll get a number for that. Um, so that's going to be um, 1 divided by 1 times 1 times 10 to the minus 6 is 1 times 10 to the minus 6. So we'll say 1e6 minus. Um, and then so now that's going to be times Avogadro's number, 6.022e to the 23, and then divided by the mass, 223. Um, and so I get a large number of atoms. So to three sig figs, 2.70. And man, why didn't they give me that? And scientific notation okay so there's three six nine twelve uh fifteen right one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen 15. okay i had to count just to make sure so 2.70 times 10 to the 15 atoms and now this radioactive decay it's it goes very simple once i have those two units so i can say my radioactive decay is going to be um k times a or excuse me, K times N, so 7.04 times 10 to the minus 7, 1 over seconds, times 2.70 times 10 to the 15 atoms. And I'll leave that number here in the calculator. And when I say times 7.04 times 10 to the minus 7, um, so that's going to give me a number, oh, of course, I don't know why it's not giving me scientific notation, 1.90, I think that should be times 10 to the 8, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, uh, to the 9, okay? And so that is directly in atoms per second, which is in units of Bequirl, automatically, okay? So I can say 1.9 times 10 to the 9, 
BQ. And if I want to get that in units of Curie, I need to divide it by this 3.7 times 10 to the 10. So now we'll say divided by 3.7 times 10 to the 10th. And um, that gives me a much more you know, manageable number, 0. 0.0514 Curie. Okay. So when we talk about radioactive decay, or, or really I should say radioactivity, and we say something is like, you know, 0.05 Curie or something like that, okay? That's really giving us a rate, a rate of decay. How many decay events per second or how many atoms per second are going to undergo decay? Okay, so we'll do one more sample calculation in a Part B video.